Alright, hello. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm nervous, so when Kayla ended, I was like, keep speaking Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I have four different people for you to consider a drug addict, an alcoholic, a thief, and a murderer. What if I were to tell you that at one time I was all of them? Well, I'm not. For me, <laughs> For me, by the grace of God, I'm not a drug addict and an alcoholic. And for you, by the grace of God, I'm not a thief or a murderer. <laughs> but if I were any of those people, would my testimony be any less important? I'll address that in a moment. But for those of you that don't know, know me, I'm, my name is Matthew Hong, and I've been attending IPC for the last uh, four years. I was raised in the church, and I was brought up by a loving Christian family. I was surrounded by the word and Christian influences, so I grew up knowing exactly the right thing to say when asked questions from my Sunday school teachers or even my parents. <laughs> I've been a Christian all my life, and there were, aren't there any moments I can recall that I truly fell away from God? Of course there were times like when I doubted the sovereignty of God or even His existence, but I've always been serious about my walk with God. But I grew, but like, <clears throat> I've never had that really epiphany moment that a lot of non-Christians have when they come to know God. So. I just, I guess you can say I've been a Christian all my life, but I have to say that I grew most once I got into high school because once I had left my rather homogenous bubble of middle school and entered a high school and more known for its liberalism. And like reading this room, uh, I was a minority in my community because as a conservative pro-life non darnist proponent of pop A, <laughs> it's kind of hard going to a school where all those ideals are not really like except for they're tolerated, but they're not really liked. So it was, this, it was during this time in high school when I learned, when all I, when all I had learned for the past 14 years was tested. Um, so in like classrooms and stuff, it'd, be, it'd always be kind of difficult to, uh, when people were talking, especially in science classes, talking about like evolution, or like uh, in history classes, such like that, when they're talking about difficult subjects, it's always kind of, difficult to maybe raise your hand and say what you truly thought rather than just going with the crowd. And that's kind of some of the things that have shaped me. I'll spare you all the details, but it's like, <laughs> it's, one of those, it's one of those things in high school where you truly learn where your faith is. But the main point I'm actually trying to get at, I want it has very little to do with me. Simply my testimony is not about me, despite how many times I've actually used I in the last couple minutes. <laughs> but, uh, Yesterday, uh, I actually unintentionally opened up to Paul's testimony during his persecution in Jerusalem, and I already knew that my testimony wasn't nearly as incredible as Paul's was, or a thief, or a murderer, or any person you want to put in the blank. In fact, it is almost altogether unremarkable. But a more important fact is that it doesn't matter how remarkable or unremarkable my testimony is, because I'm an instrument of God's hand. As all of you well know, God can do anything, and it's not our life stories that make us effective in proclaiming God's love. It is God who does the work. <laughs> All right, so I kind of have a bizarre analogy coming, so and it's kind of obscure, so I'm just warning you guys ahead of time. So, <laughs> all right. So imagine God as like a patron in a restaurant. Okay. So he has a fork, his knife, his spoon, his plate, and a cup. And let's say I'm the fork. While I'm the appropriate utensil for eating food, I can't pick up soup. So. God would need a spoon, and we'll just say the spoon is the murderer. So he's he'll need. A, he's kind of so, and we'll say the murderer turns into a Christian, so he has his testimony. So God needs his murderer for the soup. So he's going to use the spoon for his soup. He's not going to use it for food. And it just depends on what God is eating that He chooses to different utensils. So it's what I'm, the point of the whole analogy is that you can be saved through. Any type of meaning, you know, born and Christian or like murdering someone comes in answer to God. It's just, it's the same story though, in, a, in essence. So, going back to my question earlier, if I were a drug addict, an alcoholic, thief, or murderer, would my testimony be any less important? The answer is simply no. The reason for this is that I am just a sinner, just as much as the alcoholic or the thief. And we are all sinners when it comes down to it. I know that it's only by grace that any of us are saved. Um, so when it comes down to it, it really doesn't matter how important, and I use that term very loosely, uh, a testimony is because in each and every testimony, it, is, it has always been about the grace of God saving us. 
This testimony at the core of it is not my testimony, it's God's working in my life. Alright, and then uh, I have a verse to share with you. It's kind of like my favorite verse, but uh, Romans 8 38. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, nor the heights nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate, separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus our Lord. before about, uh, you know, kids growing up in the Christian home and not remembering when, there's, when they trust the Christ as Savior. And sometimes they might not realize when that point is. But a person needs to understand that they, who Christ is and who, who they're trusting at the present time. And, uh, you know, and, you know, Matt uh, shared about how about what he is believing and trusting in to get to get saved, because none of us are born into the Christian faith. Everyone needs to make that decision for Christ, and we thank you for Matt's uh, profession of faith in Christ and knowing Christ as the Savior. And so, based on Matt's profession, his parents, Wally and Joanne, will baptize him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 